Hi everybody, welcome to Rush Reality. My name is Sam, thank you so much for joining me. Now Valve recently announced Steam Link. That is a direct competitor to Virtual Desktop or Oculus Link. That is a way of connecting your Quest 3 to a gaming PC so that you can play your PC VR games wirelessly while still having fantastic visuals. Now Valve aren't prolific. When they step into something new, they tend to do it really well. They think their things through and it tends to be a very smooth experience. Now with PC VR games, I love playing them wirelessly. It's a fantastic experience. But the one thing that I don't like is that along with that tends to be a bit of compression. As you're playing, you get this kind of slight artifacting throughout the image that just constantly reminds you you're sending that signal over a wireless link. Now, is it enough to stop me doing that and instead hardwire my connection? Sometimes. But in most cases, I do like the freedom that comes with wireless play. Now, I was very excited when I saw what Valve had announced because I thought maybe they found a solution to this. Maybe we're gonna be seeing better PC VR visuals than ever when playing wireless. Did that turn out to be the case? Well, today I thought we'd run a comparison. What I've done is I've fired up some of my favorite PC VR games and I jumped into them both on Virtual Desktop and the new Steam Link. Now you might ask, why not use Oculus Link as well? Well, we've done plenty of comparisons of that on this channel and I always tend to prefer Virtual Desktop. You get much more settings and the visuals at the end come out much sharper in my experience. If you wanna check out some of those videos, then please do. But today we're gonna to treat Virtual Desktop as the standard that Steam Link has to beat. Now it's worth mentioning that I do have a Wi-Fi 6 connection. I've got my PC hardwired into my internet and I use that Wi-Fi 6 to connect my Quest 3. I've got a really, really fast, stable internet connection. So things are in a pretty good place to start off with. If you've got a very different networking setup to mine, then your mileage may vary. But I would say that one of the best things I've done to impact my PC VR visuals is sorting out that networking. So definitely consider get around to that if you haven't already. Now, what was my prediction coming into this? Well, I had heard some other people talking about their experiences with Steam Link, and I thought that I would come out with two things in mind. One, that virtual desktop may be still one on visual quality, but that Steam Link was so simple that I might find myself using that instead on many occasions. But you know what? That didn't turn out to be the case. Let's check out the footage. We're kicking off here with Blade and Sorcery on virtual desktop. As I load into this first room, I'm trying to look at the textures around me, taking the clarity, and if I'm honest, in my headset, I can't see much compression. It all looks pretty good. But that all changes as we move outside. Now at this point, I should note that although I'm receiving around 90 frames per second to my VR headset, the Quest 3's video capture is capping out at just 30. So if it appears slightly jittery, that doesn't necessarily reflect the experience I'm getting in the headset. We're better served focusing on the clarity and the visual elements on the screen. Now, if I'm honest, the visuals look pretty good on Blade and Sorcery. The only time I notice some slight compression is in the grass as I'm moving around. Now, it doesn't necessarily show up as clearly on a recording as it does when you've got a VR headset on and your eyes are so close up to those panels. Moving now to Blade and Sorcery played on Steam Link. And again, in this first room, if I'm honest, it looks fairly comparable. I'm still not seeing too much compression. The movement feels fluid. And overall, I would say this is a very playable experience. So let's move outside. Here it is easier to notice that compression. I'd say again, I can notice it quite a bit on the grass as I'm playing. It's also fairly noticeable as I look up into the sky. The texture popping that you see is actually indicative of Blade and Sorcery itself and not the wireless protocol. But overall, from testing out both methods for Blade and Sorcery, I would say in this instance, both are very playable. Let's compare some still shots to see if anything jumps out. Here's a shot to show the two areas where I saw the most compression when I was playing the game, with both the sky and the grass in the footage. As we look between the two shots, I don't see an enormous difference between the visuals. But as we put them side by side, you see just how much more detail is in virtual desktop, particularly around the edges. Now it is worth noting that foveated rendering is a stock feature with Steam Link, and it actually always runs. There's no option currently turn it off. Now that's not quite such advanced foveated rendering as what you might get on something like the Quest Pro or high-end devices like the Vario Aero. Devices like that would use eye tracking to track exactly where you're looking and make sure that that is the clearest picture. Now Steam Link doesn't do that. What it instead does is it makes a sweet spot in the center of your screen. Wherever you're generally pointing your headset, 
that is where that sweet spot is going to be and the edges are going to be of a slightly lower clarity. Now I find this a little bit disappointing on something like the Quest 3 that has those pancake lenses bringing you edge to edge clarity because that really stands out and you really notice that resolution difference on the edges. It does make me think maybe this is set up for a device that is yet to come. Maybe it is ready for Valve's next release. We've heard a long time about Valve Deckard and we know that they have a wireless headset in the works. Maybe this is the application they're going to be using. That makes me think that maybe they're going to continue using those Fresnel lenses that don't have the edge to edge clarity like you do on the Quest 3. Now that would be disappointing, but applications like this using that heavy foveated rendering kind of lean into that setup. So maybe that is what they're planning. Or maybe I'm reading too much between the lines and we've just got to wait and see. Let's take a look at another game scenario. Here we're jumping back into Virtual Desktop to check out Automobilista 2. This is a game that I enjoy playing because it looks visually awesome in virtual reality. And this is one of the use cases where I think the foveated rendering that comes with Steam Link could be most frustrating. Here, I like to look at my HUD, I like to look at the leaderboard, and I like to look at the little bits of information that I can get from the dashboard. And often I like to do that without moving my head too much because I want to make sure I'm not missing anything important from the race by looking away but it's also a game that can be quite challenging to run. So if your PC isn't quite up to it, maybe that foveated rendering could be a massive help. Often when I'm playing this game, the compression becomes most apparent in the track as it's moving quickly by. I have to say, in this case, it looks kind of fantastic. I'm not seeing much compression and the details are really shining through. That text is very easy to read and my eyes are free to move around without too much head movement required. Let's see how it looks when played on Steam Link. Now I think the first thing you'll notice is just how much foveated rendering stands out when you've got that leaderboard on the left there, just to look how much blurrier that writing appears to be. Very similar with the dash that's on my steering wheel. You can still read the text and it's still useful, but everything just looks a little lower fidelity. I have to say though, the game itself is running quite smoothly. But I did actually experience some audio hitching in this game. Nothing too brutal, but it did pull me out of the experience a couple of times. You just hear little crackles and little breaks in the sound. Now that is something that doesn't happen when I'm playing via virtual desktop. Now for me, the visual difference was dramatic. When you play on a virtual desktop, you do still get that compression and it is noticeable when you particularly look for it. But when you play in the game, you tend to blend in and forget about those kind of minor details and it all just happens around you. But when I was playing on Steam Link, I just could not get away from that compression. It was so heavy and I was always aware of it. And, and details that were otherwise very clear were suddenly falling away. If I had to summarize the overall experience, I'd say that when playing with Steam Link, it felt like there was a general haze over the gameplay from that high compression and this kind of lower visual clarity. I would also say that it felt like stepping back in time to using the Quest 2 because of that heavy foveated rendering, making the details sharper in the center and not so sharp on the edges. It really felt like the experience I'm used to on the old Quest 2 with the Fresnel lenses and that sweet spot in the middle. That's an experience I'm really happy to have moved away from. So I'm not too excited about jumping back into Steam Link to see more of it. I've experimented with multiple different settings for each protocol. Here are my settings for virtual desktop. I've got the VR graphics quality at godlike, frame rate at 90 FPS, that works well for me. Bit rates are always up 200. Sharpening at 75%. I have synchronous space warp set to automatic, so it uses it when it feels best. And then the advanced settings you see on the right there. I also use the AV1 codec as it works very well with modern Nvidia GPUs. You would be forgiven for thinking that Steam Link didn't have any settings because when you launch, it doesn't give you the options you see with Virtual Desktop. But there are some Steam Link settings hidden away in the Steam menu. Now, I was very excited when I first saw that I could change from auto to manual and the target bandwidth was higher than I'm able to go with Virtual Desktop. You can also set the encoded video size to be a very specific number. However, in reality, when I came to play with these, I saw very little visual difference in the gameplay. Now let's take a look at another game. This is Hubris, again, on Virtual Desktop. Now this is a game that I think, again, looks visually fantastic, but I don't think I'll be quite so upset about the foveated rendering, because I'm not looking for those kind of aspects around the edges of the screen. For me, this is a good experience when playing on Virtual Desktop, though my PC is powered by a 4090, so your mileage might vary. If you're struggling to get smooth playback, then maybe it's time you did check out Steam Link. Here we are seeing that same scene again, but this time via Steam Link. And in this use case, I would say the game holds up very well. 
Because I'm not specifically searching out those corner details, everything looks pretty good. The compression is absolutely still there. You can see it in the static that appears over the dark areas. But I really wasn't noticing this when playing the game unless I specifically searched for it. I think this is a use case where the one-click simple setup of Steam Link can make it nice and easy to jump into a game and still get a very good experience. For my final bit of gameplay, I'd like to take a look at Assetto Corsa Competizione. Now this is a game where I thought the foveated render room would be particularly useful, because although it's a game that I love playing in virtual reality, I've always struggled to get great performance from this game because it can be so demanding. So I thought jumping into this game, I might really enjoy the Steam Link version. Here, we're taking a look at the virtual desktop outputs. and have to say, it's looking pretty good. Just look at the clarity on that wheel. Look at the clarity on that dashboard. Everything is where I want it to be nice and easy to look at. Minor compression, and in this instance, it's running quite smoothly. Though, as I say, I have encountered issues with it in the past. As we move now to the Steam Link output, I have to say I wasn't as blown away as I expected to be. It certainly is running a little bit more smooth than it was on Virtual Desktop, but I still think the loss of visual clarity is too much of a sacrifice to get that extra smoothness. I run with a less substantial HUD in ACC than I do in Automobilista, but I still think that the loss of detail on the wheel and the wheel dash is too much to be lost. You also get much more jagged lines. Just look at the way the windscreen meets the top of the body of the car. Very, very jagged. Now you absolutely get some aliasing issues here on virtual desktop, but it's to a much lower degree and I notice it much less when playing. Let's take a quick look at some stills from that gameplay. Here, if we pause it at the same kind of point in the race, on this first clip from virtual desktop, I think at first glance, everything looks pretty clear. And if we punch in a little bit closer, I think you can see a bit of the compression across the entire screen as it's got that slightly pixelated gritty feel and you can see the level of aliasing at the top of that windscreen. And then zooming into that wheel dash, you can see just how clear all of that text is. And moving now to Steam Link, again, at first glance, I don't think there's a massive difference between the two. Let's punch into the top of that screen. Here, I think the compression is a bit more apparent. Just look how consistent that layer of grit is, whether you're looking at road, grass or fence. And the aliasing at the top of the screen, although not wildly different to virtual desktop, does look slightly more jagged. These are minor differences, but when your face is so close to the screens as it is when wearing a VR headset, things are a lot more apparent. And then as we zoom down to the steering wheel, I was actually surprised how clear some of the text remained despite the foveation. I definitely wouldn't consider this unusable. I did though hope it would be slightly better than it ended up. Now, I do think it's worth me mentioning that a friend of mine was also testing out Steam Link over the weekend and came away with very different takeaways. In fact, he thought that Steam Link came away far more successfully the virtual desktop ever had previously. Now he is a Quest 2 user, so maybe that foveated rendering was leaning into that kind of lens setup. And also he's never really been able to get his network in, in a position where he was happy with the outputs from virtual desktop. He'd always hit visual issues and those kind of audio hitches. So maybe the fact that Steam Link was doing the configuration for him on this auto setup was meaning that he was getting a better experience. So if you're in a similar bucket and you've always struggled to get really good performance from virtual desktop, Maybe you do go and check out Steam Link, particularly as it's a free application and it can't hurt you to try. So there you have it. For me, Virtual Desktop is still the clear winner. The wide range of settings and options, the AV1 encoding, and all of the little settings that enable you to push the clarity to the nth degree, make it a much better solution for my setup. Now maybe your mileage will vary, and if you've struggled to get great performance from Virtual Desktop, you should go and check out Steam Link. Anyway, let me know in the comments below. Have you been able to check it out already? How has your experience been so far? And what is your preferred method of playing PC VR? Thank you very much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it or if you found it useful, then a like would be appreciated and I would love to see you next time. Thank you very much. Goodbye.